Okay, we're at Agile China 2012, an Ericsson yeah. conference, and we are here with Lisa Atkins and Michael Spade. Hello. And uh, we would like to have a short discussion uh, about uh, coaching, basically, mm -hmm. which is uh, what you do best. <laughs> and maybe to start the whole discussion off, uh, what would you say that coaching is and coaching is not, and why is coaching important in a transition period? Mm -hmm. Coaching is a lot of things. It's not just one, especially when we talk about agile coaching. It's a number of things. It's not just knowing about agile and being able to teach that to people. Yes, that's very important, and that's not the end of it. It's the place to start, and uh, it's not the place where you end at all. Because as soon as you start teaching people about agile, then then all of their transformation process starts. They find places a developer on a team will say, well, I don't like Agile because I, you know, I don't need to tell you what I'm going to do every day. Right? Well, that's a place for a transformation to start. Um, or they might say something very different, like, I just don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do yeah. test-driven development. Yeah, right. You have to show me. Yeah. So sometimes you have to show people. Mm -hmm. We call it mentoring. And sometimes you have to use professional coaching to help people to help people overcome their own internal barriers and find out the reason why Agile matters to them, that they would actually be willing to do it well. Professional coaching is not about convincing somebody mm -hmm. of something or telling them something. It's really about listening carefully to them and asking them mm -hmm. questions to help them understand themselves better, uh, yeah. actually, and their own what's important to them and what's getting them stuck and what could get them unstuck. Yeah. Agile coaches are also teachers. I mean, just simple as that. We teach all kinds of things. We teach our knowledge of Agile and how Lean works. Um, and if we developed in a specialty area, like let's say we were really good with technical stuff like software craftsmanship, we teach that. If we're really good at, um, at business, at knowing how Agile can be a competitive advantage feature for, for a whole company, you know, knowing how Agile is strategic rather than just tactical, then we teach that. And, of course, we, um, the Agile ceremonies, the uh, planning meeting, the review meeting, we meeting. facilitate. Yeah, that. We facilitate We're a those. neutral yeah. process holder to help the team hear its own voice, or mm -hmm. hear the voice of the stakeholders and mm -hmm. so forth. So we're a process yeah. holder yeah. in that case. And I would say the final thing is that um, so it's, it's not too long when you bring Agile in. It's not too long before Agile starts wanting to make change in the organization. We're showing you where that change probably needs to be mm -hmm. made, where you're not doing everything that you hoped, or mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't solve our problem, no, but it, it points just, to them. Oh, right there, right yes. there. It makes them painful. I mean, for example, it shows where the, maybe the release management process doesn't actually work with Agile at all. Even though the teams can produce faster, it doesn't matter because release management and integration test is still, you know, three months or eight months long, whatever it is. And that's a place for, um, for some hard work of working with people in the organization to help them understand how they can transform the organization to be fully Agile end-to-end. Because it, it's about Agile delivery. It's not just about being Agile here or here. So when Agile points out these difficult places that we have to work in, that's when you need a lot of different skill sets. Yeah. You might need, sometimes you might need teaching. Yeah. You might need mentoring. You might need coaching. You might need facilitating. But that above, is, yeah, but above all, I would say uh, you need to have some professional coaching skill because we're talking about human change. You know, we hear all the time that the, my, the manager or the CEO doesn't get it. They don't get Agile. Well, they don't actually have to get too much of the details of Agile, but they do need to get an Agile mindset if they're going to get the results they want from Agile. And really, teaching them about Agile or trying to mentor them or making them do it a certain way, that usually doesn't work. Do we start it off in this way, or does the, the professional coaching as, as a discipline of approach to people come a bit later? Oh. It comes. It usually comes a little bit later. Comes a little bit later. It, so I, I would say when when there is eagerness, when there's willingness, when there's interest, mm -hmm. it makes sense to teach, yeah. and maybe to mentor, because yeah. that's a 
Totally. It's natural. When there's resistance, when there's blockage, when there's stopping, you yeah. need professional coaching because you need to understand or they need to understand yeah. more what's going yeah. on. You don't convince them out of their resistance. Yeah. When there's a when there's a senior manager, let's say, saying, I want you to be agile, and the next day, where's my delivery? Right? So the, a useful approach with this person is to is to coach them. To say, so notice what notice what impact you're having right now. What do you think that is? So he has to find it out himself yeah. in order for him to buy it. And yeah, because he's in the middle of a big change. And a coach's job can be to point out that discrepancy, mm -hmm. but without judgment, without, yes. oh, you're bad, you're doing this, yeah. but just, huh, did you notice mm -hmm. an inquiry kind of a perspective? Yeah. Did you notice that that, did you mm -hmm. understand that that's maybe inconsistent? Yeah. Okay, you have mentioned the role of a line manager in the transition. What would you say that is the role in the organization if we divide it up in the new process saying like Scrum Master, Product Owner, member of the team or a line manager? Who needs coaching at most and who needs coaching first? Who do you approach first? Is your question what happens to line managers in Agile or, or something about coaching and importance of coaching? Let's say there is a transition in the organization. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering who do you approach first if you want to make the thing fly? Whoever really wants us. Okay. Yeah. We don't go where there's tremendous, uh, strong, and obstinate resistance. We go where there's a possibility and get it working and help people become really good agilists. And then as soon as that happens, the entire system changes. And then now maybe there's another place to go. Inside the organization. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, it's useful to touch base with everybody Yes. at yeah. the beginning yeah. to, to let them know what changes might happen, Yeah. to get a sense of them, to get to know yeah. them a little bit. I'll go to line managers and I'll say, so, um, so let me just teach you a little bit about what's going to happen. As your teams use Agile, they're not going to need you to make decisions for them. And they're not going to need you to tell them what to do every day. They're going to need you to... Um, uh, watch them over time as they progress or as they struggle mm -hmm. and give them feedback about that, yeah. but not direction. Yeah. And they need you to fight battles for them outside yes. the team and the rest of the organization for the impediments that, um, uh, particularly the ones that keep coming up yeah. or that other the teams bring up. Yeah. Yeah. That's what managers need to pay attention to is mm -hmm. things outside the team largely. Yeah. Okay, in the presentation today you were talking about a zigzag mm -hmm. place, I would say, or a zigzag uh, point in time yeah. uh, in a transition of every single person, maybe even an organization yeah. in, in the transition. Yeah. So, how do you, is there any way to, to control this period, is there any way to speed the zigzag yeah. period up? Is there any way to, 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 to get to the tipping point that you were also mentioning, yeah. where everything will yes. fly yes. by itself, yes. so yes. Yes. to be yes. patient, yes. to not try to push it faster yeah. than it than it is going because when we resist that zigzag period, the zig we, we mean going from the familiar to the new thing to the emerging thing, back and then we go back and forth back a bit forth. Yeah. for a while. Yeah. Um, when we when we we resist that process in ourselves, or when we resist that process in other people, it actually slows it down. It makes it a it, lot longer. It either makes it go underground, so people pretend that it's not happening when it is, or um, they go back to the other side, say, forget, forget you, yeah. I don't want to do that. And instead, what makes it speed up is to just be with it. So let's say you have, um, have that manager that doesn't know what to do, really, when with Agile comes in, and, um, and they, they go and they try to control their team because their team is having a problem. So it, from a prof professional coaching standpoint, you go work with that manager and say, okay, so what's happening for you? And then I'd say, oh gosh, I'm so anxious. My boss is really breathing down my neck. I have to get, have, we have to have this delivery done. Yeah. yeah, I can really see how that's frustrating. I mean, I can see how you are really under pressure. And just be with it. Be with what's actually happening for them. And in so doing, you, you create a relaxation. They're heard. They know that, that, that you've heard what's happening for them. And they go, well... You know, my manager is always breathing down my neck. You know, maybe this one isn't as big a 
an emergency as I thought. Maybe I could, you know, let them have a little bit of room. What would, what would maybe be the biggest difference of, uh, let's say, external and internal coaches? Mm -hmm. So we always, I mean, the companies, what they usually do, they start out yeah. with some external coaching yeah. and then there's different periods or different methods how to yeah. transfer the knowledge to the internal coaches and get yeah. them, get the organization yeah. going. So what would be a I'll, recipe there? I want to start with a principle and then, and then uh, have, see what happens. So the, or the principle or the belief that Michael and I both have is that the best way for Agile to be healthy and sustained over the long time is for companies to develop their own internal coaches. Um, now, companies don't usually have those people initially. Yeah. And kicking off a change process is usually more easily done with external people, with some number of them yeah. at least. Because they carry some kind of authority or expertise. And they're just not part of the system. They're yeah. not uh, indoctrinated into the system in the same way that an internal person. And yeah. at the same time, uh, I think I would say you want to start the transfer of that competency immediately, immediately. Not, immediately. not wait, immediately. but start it right away. Yeah. But, but it's helpful to have the catalyst from outside yeah. and, and actually also with uh, uh, colleagues inside too. Yeah. You want both. Yeah. As, as soon as I come into an organization and I start doing some agile coaching there, um, like let's say I'm um, uh, facilitating a meeting or doing a mentoring session with someone or something, as soon as I do that, I'll sit down with the other coaches who've witnessed that and I'll say, okay, what did you see me do? How did you see me work with that? Where did I do something that surprised you and you would have done it a different way? And so we talk about that because my job is to, is to convey these skills, transfer these skills as fast as possible to as many people as possible. And that's actually why we started creating a, a coaching training curriculum because we can reach more people that way through the um, experiential learning model that we have in our classes and they can practice doing that themselves and then they can go and immediately affect 10 teams. And so if we train a thousand of those people in a year, that's a big impact. So you're saying that one coach can impact 10 teams and work simultaneously with, with 10 oh, teams? Not necessarily. I don't take it too seriously mm -hmm. there. No, I, I would yeah. say not at the same time. Yeah. Like that, that's yeah. You're probably um, going to give them almost nothing if you have 10 teams Ten, at the same yeah. time. But you could have um, two or three at the same time and sequentially yeah. move from one to the other and pay a little bit. You pay less and less attention over time to yeah. each team and more to the new team. Now that's, I, I say that's true as, especially or maybe only if you have scrum masters on those teams. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, let's so say there, that there needs this to is be a the mechanics there of needs, Scrum. Yeah. yeah, there needs to be someone there yes, for sure. the, the stuff that comes up daily. You know, for the moments that, that a coach who's got three or four teams, they, they can't see that. But those coaches are, are looking at a higher level at those teams, like at a more of a process level and a performance level. And those coaches are also coaching the Scrum Masters to be great. Right? And so, yeah, that kind of coach could have three or four teams at a time. Okay, and the Scrum Masters and their, I mean, their role is to be the coach of the team anyway. Yes. Yeah, by definition, yes. so to say. Yes. And how much... You say that by definition. I'm glad you've got that definition. Not everyone does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and how much would you say that, that uh, a coach, coach's job is to interact with a team mm. compared to interacting with an individual in the team? Oh. Hmm. I think it I depends on the team, it depends on the individual. Yeah. Um, you know, you go, you, you get different leverage out of both, obviously. Yeah. Um, I, I like to uh, meet at the beginning when I work with a new team, mm -hmm. I like to meet with everybody yeah, on a team individually and get a sense of them and periodically check in with them. Mm -hmm. But I, I wouldn't spend a huge amount of my time, no. probably the proportion of my time doing that. But, but a few yeah. people are usually key on a team. Mm -hmm. to, to influence yeah. or to uh, teach or to coach maybe because they hold some resistance for the team. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you're, usually there's higher leverage in a couple of people. Yeah. Um, I'd say that probably yeah. most of the one-on-one -on -one coaching that I do and that the coaches that I coach do is outside the team mm -hmm. with managers and other functions that interact with the team.
and product owners, product management. Yeah. And that usually shifts from, you know, at the, at the beginning, it's intensely with the team usually, mm -hmm. and fairly quickly when they get a cadence, which doesn't take terribly but, long, yeah, teams grow. you move outside the team. Yeah, teams can get up and running pretty quickly. Now, they're not, they're not perfect, I mean, you still need to work with them, but they don't take so much of the attention. Okay, and I guess I guess that the most of the time that you work with teams or organizations is in within the, the Scrum framework, which is like the most popular framework so far. Is it is it so? Uh, yeah, Michael has a lot of experience yeah. with XP. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't done well. I have done XP uh, lately too. I've I've done both Scrum and XP, I, but Scrum is certainly much more yeah. common worldwide. No question about yeah. that yeah, yeah. than anything else. Yeah, and um, I also have a background in Lean, so marrying kind of Scrum and Lean and just also even plain old Six Sigma techniques. I've had experience with coaching teams that are doing that kind of marriage. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned uh, XP because most of the people that, that are actually sort of uh, uh, trying to, to, to give tips on how to for the teams to progress and to get the benefits of Agile say that it's not enough just no. to organize in a Scrum framework. No, not if you're it's developing a, software. It's a, yeah. good, it's a good way to start because it's simple and it's easy and it doesn't, it's not too demanding. Yeah. But um, if the engineering side is not developing toward XP engineering practices, they're going to miss up a lot. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, if the product owner is not um, evolving toward lean startup, practices, yeah. um, they're going to be miss missing out on a lot. Do you know that lean, the book Lean Startup, can we say that? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's a book by a guy named Eric Ries, R-I-E-S, or Ries, yeah. Yeah, and that's kind of, that book I think is really important because it's, um, it's a way for business people to understand how Agile is for them too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the business and the technology. Yeah, it's, it's like uh, engineering practices or business people. Yeah, 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 it is. Well, that's kind of cool that the Scrum framework is this kind of management yes. framework, and you have engineering practices mm -hmm. for software developers or, or software craftsmen, engineering practices for the business. That's pretty cool. That's the beauty of Scrum is that it's permissive that way, that it allows that. It doesn't mm -hmm. force that, but it's completely consistent with mm -hmm. that. Well, it doesn't say anything about it, yeah. to be honest. No, yeah. I so mean, and actually, it, it's, it wasn't meant to be complete. The Scrum framework is absolutely not meant to be complete, yeah. but it's meant to be a uh, a container that's just the right size to hold things, not too big, not too small. Okay, is, is it as well a part of the coach's job to get this message through to, to, oh, to the yes, team absolutely. about the engineering practices as well? Yeah. Well, actually to notice what the team needs. Yeah, so if, if you're noticing that the team, wow, you know, their, their software really sucks. They need, they need some help here. So to notice that and to bring some expertise to them and also to ask them what they think. What, what do you think we need? I, I think, though, the, your, your uh, question made me think of that in the same way that a product owner needs to have a product roadmap to say, here's where we're oh. going in the long run, yeah. uh, especially an enterprise Azure coach mm -hmm. um, could use a process roadmap or a mm -hmm. practices roadmap. Mm -hmm. And it may or may not come down that way, obviously. Then you have to see what happens. You have to inspect and adapt to how the organization works. But to paint a picture of mine would be you start with Scrum, and then you start bringing in en Agile engineering practices at some point, and you start bringing in lean startup practices at some yeah. point. Uh, to paint a picture yeah. like that, we're not going to do that all at once. Well, and the other thing that that reminds me of, uh, just I'm building on it, is that, um, that it would be good to have that and have like a general roadmap, but what you're going to do is you're going to notice where the bottleneck is. So if the bottleneck is in the teams because they can't produce software fast enough because they don't have good test coverage, then you go in there and solve that. But then as soon as you do, then the bottleneck's going to move. And if it moves to product development or product management, because we actually don't know what the heck the customer really wants, well, then that's where you go and you coach and you make that better. And as soon as you do, the bottleneck's going to move to another place. So you just kind of watch that from an enterprise level. Okay, so thank you both, and maybe would you like to share some final tips for the Ericsson uh, coaching community or for the Agile uh, Croatia young movement? Um, yeah, I would, thank you. Um, 
So the reason that Michael and I are, are partners together in the Agile Coaching Institute, and the reason that we're bringing Agile Coaching curriculum and services to the world is because we believe that Agile coaches are in the best place to be transformation agents in their companies and in their cities and in the whole world. And we are at a really critical point in the world where we need some transformation agents. We need some people who can really help us, the whole worldwide, become a lot better. Because we are kind of stuck right now working in old mechanical or mechanized ways that actually don't work with the reality of our modern world. And Agile is the best thing we found that works with the reality of our, of our modern world. And, um, and if we have Agile coaches that are well equipped, they will be very powerful transformation agents. Agile leaders, Agile coaches and scrum masters, um, we believe are the leaders of the future. Yeah, they they understand, right. they're attracted to, they're drawn to the new paradigm. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. uh, we want them to keep the faith and yeah. uh, to, to keep, keep developing, to keep going, mm -hmm. even even when there's uh, resistance or um, people are not quite ready. Mm -hmm. They will be. They will be.